Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Quilkey, and I'm back with another video. Today, it's time for another story time. That's right, it's a day in the life of Wilkey, aka story time with Wilkey, because it has two different names. Um, and I wanted to talk about specifically, you know, stuff has been going on during quarantine, and I wanted to talk about some of the stuff I've been watching during quarantine. Some of, the, some of this is more recent. Um, the reason I'm doing this and doing it in such a weird format, by the way, so... If you end up liking this video, I hope you really do. The reason this all ended up going bad is because it took me like three hours to watch WandaVision because freaking I had to I had so many issues trying to get it to work and then realizing, oh, apparently I just needed to fucking blast a cache of Disney Plus. Cool. I guess that was just something I had to do and that was what was preventing me from streaming it alright. But anyway. Some of the movies I watched during quarantine, let me actually just say of oh, this week. So during this quarantine, you know, there's not much for me to do. Even my work, I can watch movies or TV shows and kind of keep on going. Um, so I ended up going to a lot of like old classics. Old classics in the sense, well, let me rephrase that because, well, actually some old classics I've seen, not technically old, but um, Chinatown, which was directed by Roman Polanski. Uh, you may remember him most as that director who fled to France after, you know, getting it on with someone he really shouldn't have been getting it on with. He's also the husband of, um, he was the husband of Sharon Tate, who was the lady who was murdered. I don't mean the left. She was murdered by the, um, the Manson family, if you've ever seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's funny for me to think about, like, hey, do you know the Manson family? Because in my mind, it's like, yeah. Because in California, they never left. There's like specific parts in, um, I think the woods in Chatsworth, where I went to school near, you would hear tales of like kids going to the forest and being like, oh yeah, we went up there at night and we accidentally bumped into the Manson family and it really sucked because they're just out there. Uh, they never left because except for the ones who committed the murder, it's not like they could pin it on the entire group. But I digress. Um... Chinatown, which is fantastic, that had Jack Nicholson in it, and that was before. It's really weird to go back to a time where Jack Nicholson was an actor, because I feel like growing up, he was definitely in some movies, but he was in movies that like made fun of the fact that he was Jack Nicholson. I think the last one I could actually, the one of the first ones I could actually think of is the original Tim Burton Batman, which I saw him in. Um... But I've never, oh, I guess in Little Shop of Horrors, the original Roger Corman, which I think is his first movie he's ever done. If you don't know this, Little Shop of Horrors, um, it, it's most famously now known as a Broadway musical and a fantastic musical with uh, Rick Moranis. But back in the day, it started as a Roger Corman horror film that was done really uh, on the cheap. And it starred Jack Nicholson, because back in the day, Jack Nicholson got his start as uh, an actor in Roger Corman films. Um... Which just goes to show, like, I guess it doesn't matter the quality you're working in as long as you're working, to a certain extent. Um, oh, damn, that was a loud-ass phone. Hopefully you didn't hear that. <laughs> but yeah, Chinatown. Chinatown was directed by Roman Polanski. It's really good. If you've never seen it, I'm not going to spoil it, even though it's super old and at this point you can easily see it. But with a name like Chinatown, it makes you think, like, oh my god, we're about to get so many horrible horrible representation of asian people and to be fair that it's not really a lot i mean there's racist people but there was racist people back in the day so it ends up being perfectly fine but it's a hell of a mystery with one of the most like i, I guess the right word is depressing <laughs> it's depressing but it's extremely real i'm a big fan of the extremely realistic ending and not a lot of movies do it mainly because most movies are either A, super happy to the point of being unrealistic, or they're super sad to the point of being just pure unrealistic. But there was a certain, like, reality to it where it's like, yeah, this totally would just end up be this would totally just be the end case for this, huh? Because there's no real, like, again, don't want to spoil it, but I like that a whole bunch. I was watching it. Um... Roman Polanski has made some great movies, and it's unfortunate that he's a shitbag, but hey, that's unfortunately Hollywood at this point, and trust me, I know plenty of 
shitbags that I con- continuously watch their work. Similar to go- similar to music, I still like listening to Meatloaf's. Um, the continuing of making Rocky Horror Picture just extremely. I've had a real reckoning with Rocky Horror, where I really do love Rocky Horror. But not like the people who love Rocky Horror love Rocky Horror. I like it as an actual like bad movie. And not in a sense of like, oh man, I can't wait to like fucking dress up and do some weird wacky shit at midnight with my other dudes who are just, I'm not into that kind of thing. (laughs) I'm more into just kind of sitting back laughing and going, that's fucked up, right? And then occasionally people who agree with me going like, yeah, that's a really weird decision on that part. It's also a musical, which I'm a big fan of musicals at the same time. But there is a lot of problematic things in specifically Little Shop of Horror, not Little Shop of Horrors, in a, um, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Then that's kind of the thing with like, as I, at the time, I remember hearing someone be like, you know, this isn't really super fair to people who are trans. And I remember at a certain age kind of going like, oh, you know, it is a schlocky movie. And I feel like... There, at a certain point, it's like, yeah, its main thing was to offend, and also that character's just so good. But then as time goes on, and I've aged, and I hear the Sweet Transvestite song, I'm like, oh, this is a really good song, but also, I feel, I don't feel so good. <laughs> um, I always feel that way at the beginning, but you know, I end up going through it. And just end up watching it. I kind of feel similar to Moo. And it's weird because I'm also a similar way because I'm Hispanic. And I watch plenty of movies that just feature Hispanics. But again, to each their own. If they, if certain people want to disassociate from a movie because they portray them badly, then who am I to really say anything? It doesn't matter how I feel about specific... Except for, oh, Hateful Eight. I fucking hate Mexican Bob. But that was because it was released. I have less tolerance for it in modern day context. Um... Like when Tarantino did it in The Hateful Eight with Mexican Bob. Oh, I hate that character so much. Oh, I hate him so much. He's just literally, it's such a waste of a fantastic actor. Um, just to make him do the, oh, I don't know what we're going to do today, man. It was like the most like, if you, <laughs> you're going to get cursed like that, just get Cheech Marine. Because Cheech Marine just literally sounds like that. <laughs> and I love my boy Cheech Marine. I love watching Cheech and Chong. And being like, hey man, how's it going? I love doing the, the the Cheech voice and love hearing him and Lion King and all that. But when you have someone else just do it, and the only reason you're doing it is like, well, this is how Mexicans were back in the day. And it's like, this is how they were, speci- not, he never said that specifically, that's how they were in these kind of movies back in the day. Um, That's where I kind of go. No, you could have done better than this. Because you, you specifically have made certain characters not act the way that they would in the past, so it's weird to suddenly have it done for the Mexican Bob character. But I digress. Especially in Hateful Eight, where it's like stars Samuel Jackson as a black cowboy, and I can tell you right now, based off of the many, many Western films, that there was... <laughs> it's usually not how they were treated, right? The way he acted was not similar to that type of acting, but... Speaking of... African American people in movies. I also recently saw Blade One and Blade Two. Um, God damn, they're so good. They're so unbelievably good. It actually makes me kind of sad that so many Marvel movies are so cookie cutter the same. Um, because ev- because you miss it. like for sure there are plenty of bad movies that exist out of the MCU. That's kind of the thing that you you miss is that there's no more really bad movies in MCU. They're all just kind of either middling or good or boring is the right way of saying it. But when when you make them outside of the MCU umbrella, you can get some amazing, high, crazy shit like Blade 1 and Blade 2. Or you can get the really bad shit like Blade Trinity and the Fantastic Four films, stuff like that. But... It's kind of one of those, it's funny enough, the current state of old past Marvel movies is the current state of DC movies, and that's kind of why I like more recent DC movies. Like, I love Shazam. Shazam, I think, is actually the best DC movie that they've ever made. I haven't seen Wonder Woman, 
So maybe that's one of the ones where it's like, it's not that I had like a specific, specific thing against Wonder Woman, by the way. It's just literally because I never found time to see it, even when it was getting crazy praise. I just never found the time. I actually should watch it now before the Zack Snyder four hour cut of Superman comes, not Superman, um, Justice League comes out. Uh, if only to see what was up with that. Um, but yeah, that was Shazam was another quarantine movie that I saw. I think it's probably the, one of the better modern superhero movies I've seen. Like, I think I even like it more than... Well, to be fair, like... I don't know how I feel about this. But maybe it's... a. I feel like a lot of people at this point... Infinity War and Endgame are bad movies... But they're fantastic events so it's an excellent end of a specific like thing that we all agreed like the end of an experiment it is the um god what was that movie where a guy basically filmed a kid from baby to adulthood boyhood similar to how boyhood was kind of recognized for taking a look at what a child is and then slowly through the age making a movie with that same actor over the years. Um, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, damn, that's impressive. It's so impressive that you don't really care about the end bits to it. And that's kind of how I feel like for um, those two movies specifically. Is that as a movie as a whole, I don't know if they're very good movies, but they have fantastic events in them. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a porn. I really like this specific scene. Uh, I always go back to it. It's really good. Damn, you know what I'm saying? They really work it in this scene. And that's kind of how, how I felt I feel about those two specific movies is I don't want to watch the entire thing, but I do want to watch specific parts of it and kind of go like, yeah, this is the part where they say that you need a lifeguard. And then the life, and then the guy in the tub says, "I'm Iron Man," and Thanos is there somehow. But that's how I currently feel, and I still totally watch them, and I totally enjoy them. Like hell, I wouldn't be watching Wanda. I'm not one of those people who are like, "Um, the MCU needs to stop." Mm, I'm not like that. I'm perfectly fine with blockbuster popcorn films because that's what they're made to be made. And then for the art people who are like. I guess like Martin Scorsese, where they're kind of like, oh man, how can some, how can great art be persevered through such a popcorn film? And here, here's what I'm going to tell you, because Martin Scorsese, no one wants to tell this to his fucking face. It's always been that. There are people who will tell you like, no, that's not true. It used to be that the most top grossing movie was this in this specific era, like, you know, 90s even gave us, like, Pulp Fiction and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, but it also gave us Miss Doubtfire. The man who pretended to be a nanny and that was perfectly loved by everyone. There's totally other movies like that. If you want to say that specific corporations have gotten too out of hand with it, then I'll agree with you on that. And I think there should be more promotion of indie stuff. But you can't deny that the current just, like, modicum of stuff that come out. It always seems like old men yelling at clouds to me. I don't know. That's how I always felt like it. Like old. And then I also feel like embarrassed because you can't really take the side of the people against him because it's always like, dude's like, man, fuck Mars Scorsese. Like, nah, dude. Even his worst movie, Godfather 3. That's not true. Let me look up Martin Scorsese's worst movie. Mar. <laughs> I was about to say, Godfather 3 is really bad, and that's also getting a director's cut. Um, I could do an entire series of things talking about, I think The Godfather 1, 2, and 3 are f an amazing trilogy, even when you consider that. It's amazing because 1 is so good, 2 is just as good and equally as amazing, and then you look at 3 and that's like the ultimate thing down. Who's knocking at my door? Haven't seen it, so I can't really talk about Boxcar Bartha, can't Bertha, can't really talk about it, Mean Streets, can't talk about it. Alice doesn't live here anymore. Can't really say anything. Taxi Driver, basically the reason we got a good DC movie out of Joker. So good. New York, New York. Sounds like a bunch of New York wanking, raging bull. Grud, the king of comedy. The other, <laughs> the other inspiration for Joker. So obviously it's also good. 
Um, After Hours Never Seen, The Color of Money. The Last Temptation of Christ is great. That has Willem Dafoe as Jesus, um, where he took up the devil on the offer on the cross. If you've never seen The Last Temptation of Christ, you should see The Last Temptation of Christ. It got a lot of flack when it came out, but let me tell you, it's good. Goodfellas, mmm. Goodfellas is so fucking good. I love Goodfellas. I saw Goodfellas in the original print in the Chinese theater. Um, because I live in California and sometimes people be like, yo, man, we brought out the original film. You want to come here at midnight and watch Goodfellas? And I'm like, let me find a friend who does. <laughs> and there we go. Cape Fear, fucking fantastic. Age of Innocence, never seen. Casino, I need to see. I've never seen Casino. Kudan, I remember a lot of people not liking that movie. Never seen Bringing Out the Dead. I really like Gangs of New York. I don't think a lot of people like Gangs of New York nowadays. But it was my first foray into um, um, Daniel Day-Lewis as a good actor. It was the first good movie I've ever seen him in. Not to say that he wasn't making good movies before then. It was the first time I became aware of him. And it was the first really good movie for Leo that I remember seeing. Because I was never a fan of Titanic or him in Titanic. So I was just kind of like, eh, Leo. But uh, Daniel Day Lewis, fantastic. And I love them both in that. I think they have a great relationship in that film. Um, the Aviator, never saw. The, the, the Departed I actually recently saw because of quarantine. The Departed was really good. Shutter Island. I just realized as I'm going through this, I'm looking at. Let me see. Oh, he made way more fucking movies than I thought. I'm also realizing that I don't think I'm starting to think that he did not direct Godfather based on what I'm looking at here. Who the fuck? Did he not direct Godfather? Am I fucking crazy? Francis Ford Coppola, am I just a fucking idiot? I am an idiot. It's because he made good fellas. I'm so fucking stupid. Well, now you know, and that's also the proof of why I shouldn't record at like 4 a.m. in the morning. But I think that's where I'm going to put the end of this movie. If you want to hear more of me randomly talking about movies at night, Jesus Christ, Francis Forrest Coppola has made some fucking movies. Oh my god, if you want to see a follow-up to this, <laughs> where I talk about Francis Ford Coppola because I just looked at his filmography and it was like, oh yeah, you made this. You made these movies, my god. Um, then please ask for more, and I'll gladly record some more. But that's it for me, man. If you want to tell me what you've been watching, what you've been trying to, you know, TV show, movies, whatever, I'll gladly listen to you guys. Um, until next time, guys, you guys have a good day, and I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Peace out.